you mentioned there there was a person involved and I wonder if we could talk about this very special person who I've never met but you've spoken about him on two occasions probably within about half an hour yeah. and I've hung on every word you've said <laughs> and if you don't mind if we could talk a little bit about this unique special person mm -hmm. that is Dickie Evans yep Dickie is that Evans. okay yeah absolutely oh, fantastic. So, so my day job is I'm chief of staff to Dickie Evans and uh, when Dick do you sleep by the way <laughs> When do you find time? Well, yes. <laughs> My husband calls me the human Springer Spaniel. That's probably, this is, you know, that's kind of charming and kind of awful in the same breath, isn't it? My son-in-law has a Springer Spaniel. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. He said, if I give you just food and exercise, you'll be fine, darling. <laughs> <It's> shocking. <laughs> um, so my boss is Dickie Evans. He, uh, he is now... And he won't mind me telling you, he's now 76 and he has advanced Parkinson's. Oh dear. Um, and he is a, a fabulous entrepreneur, sportsman, philanthropist, and a c completely uncompromising uh, and wonderful and a family man and all of those things in the same breath. And he was born in Penzance. And if you know your geography, Penzance is you know, right down at the toe of Cornwall, nearly, nearly Land's End. He played for Penzance and Newlyn Amateur Rugby Club. Okay. And like many people, this, this terrible sort of brain drain and talent drain out of Cornwall, when it got to university, he, he had to leave Cornwall to be educated. So, uh, so he went to uni in London, and he then went to Africa uh, oh. as an engineer. So he's an engineer uh, uh, at heart uh, and by trade, and um, in Kenya, he started a very successful business, um, uh, uh, fr fr fruit and vegetable business, then, then flowers. Okay. He, um, he, being an engineer, he took the way that you use light to help animals be well and translated that into growing roses that were bigger <laughs> and longer than <laughs> other roses. Do you understand that? Sounds like an engineer to me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> anyway, he's a brilliant businessman. He's a great engineer. Uh, he's he's uh, and he created a very very successful business in wow. Kenya, and he's um, he's lived there for fifty two years. So he's a Cornish boy, but um, uh, but he's a you know he's a he's a Kenyan resident. Um, uh, married three children, um, family man, you know. Brilliant and wonderful. And in Kenya, he's very, very well known. You know, he's on three government commissions. He has their version of a knighthood. Wow. He's an enormous philanthropist. Um, as a young man, he captained Kenya and East Africa rugby. Okay. So he's a proper, proper rugby player. There's the sports connection. There's the sports connection. No, he's a you know, very, very senior rugby man. Um, and he, uh, he, uh, he was approached. I don't know the story, but he was approached by somebody... When Cornish Pipe, well, not Cornish Pipe, Penzance and Newland Rugby Club were in deep doodah, you know, a couple of decades ago. Sure. And uh, his heart has always been there. And he came back and he looked at it, he looked at it as a business. Forget that. He looked at it as a Cornishman <laughs> and a rugby yes. man. He went, yeah, I'll of help you. <laughs> <laughs> of wow. course. Every county needs the it, yeah, it's a, it was it was a heart decision, not a business decision. Wow. And, uh, and he has invested, and he, I have his permission to tell you, He's invested eighteen million pounds over twenty wow. years. He's taken them up four divisions. Uh, they're in the championship. That's the second layer of, of UK rugby. They have twice been in the playoffs for Premiership, and they this year have a very real opportunity to be promoted again. Um, so that's his life ambition. And actually, you know, he is elderly and unwell, and that's a, a, a really stark ambition now. And so the stadium comes into that because that's part of the legacy for his club and it's part of the business model that will allow the pirates to be sustainable when he's not here wow uh, so that's um that's what i do so he has um a second business a very successful uh hospitality business in kenya um and uh i work with him on a day-to-day -day basis to set up strategic and um does, uh, does tactical he, agendas for that does he spend his time between the uk and yeah Kenya? yeah yeah so he has um 
he, he, I mean, his home, his life, his family are in Kenya, um, but he spends as much time in the UK as he can. But as I say, he is, uh, you know, Parkinson's is very difficult sure. and it affects his speech and his mobility. So international travel is difficult. Um, oh dear. And as an ex-rugby player, he does say this neurological difficulty... I was just about to ask you about is that. There a link? Is there a is link? Is there a link? And I think that that concern has driven him to be, I think, the best owner of a rugby club in concern and care for his players. So Cornish Pirates have, I believe, the best player welfare for head injuries in the country. They do cold water swimming every day. Cold water swimmers do not get dementia. I, mean, I don't mean like none of them ever, but to, to statistically, it's a really good thing to, to do cold water swimming. And if you have no cold water, cold showers. Even I, even I have started to do the cold shower in the morning. Wow. It's a, so cold water swimming. He has funded the Love of the Game uh, brain scanner WAVI trial. And Cornish Pirates is the only elite sports club there's amateur clubs involved, sure. but there's the first elite club to be involved in that trial. So that starts um, in a few weeks' time. No, he's he's passionately committed to that that I've agenda. I've just read the Wim Hof book. That it's the Wim Hof method. Okay, go do it. Wow, I, do so it. I've been doing it for six months, having Have the you? cold showers. Yeah. Um, but I'm fascinated into Dickie's life. Yeah. I, I really feel like the first thing I want to do now while I go away is read up about Dickie. Yep. It, does he have a profile at all? Have you created not, something Not really, for no. I, I, I keep saying to him, I, I have to write your life story, Dickie. Yes. Please, yes. please let me. And, and also partly because he's terribly well known in Kenya. You know, he is an entrepreneur, a wealth producer, an employer, a philanthropist, but he's really unknown here. So he has, he has them, he has this great sort of, you know, entrepreneurial drive and he's so passionate about his rugby club and it's, they are a family. You know, he makes decisions based upon his staff being like his family members. They are outside of commercial decisions okay, sometimes. Sure, sure. Um, but, but, but people don't know him. They don't... He's the, he is... He's like the secret millionaire in Cornwall. He does... <laughs> no, genuinely. Wow. He, he pays for things that people have absolutely no idea about. You know, people, people who... He's, Somebody came forward to me the other day and said, can I help? He funded a music block at my school. Wow. Um, he did? When? <laughs> what? Time and time again, people say, oh, and he helped me here and he helped me there. He is one of the world's uh, most wonderful human beings, and I'm proud to work for him. To be able to give without recognition yep. is one of the key goals, It is. It I is. think, in life. And really, my um, part of what I want to do is... Is, is work on the stadium to provide an economic future for pirates when he's not here and also to find probably new shared ownership who want to pick up on that legacy but what's going to happen with the stadium is there's actually a better economic model and he knew that, you know, he's a businessman he knew, he knows that that that's the economic model that protects his beloved pirates will allow Truro City to follow their example. So Truro City is non-league. If they go up four divisions in four years because they've got a stadium yes. where they can have, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand supporters, that's their economic model. Sure. So I am, d you know, dedicated to to ensuring that Dickie's legacy is a sustainable future for his football club and his rugby club. What strikes me is the legacy of giving to that community, yep. no matter how large, yep. of a place that somebody like me, who played sport, who had those injuries, yeah. to be able to say to myself, I've got 20 quid, I've got 50 yep. quid, I can go down and I can get checked out. That would mean quite a lot to me because before going home having lunch after play football yeah. and then sleeping on the settee because I felt a little bit oh. that's the worry isn't it yeah. and and so 
the legacy of the stadium is one thing. The legacy for the community. Oh, it's extraordinary. <gasps> and the other thing wow. that he has done and I, is that he has now bequeathed this into the community interest company. Wow. So in, he's ne- I talk about he's moved from owner to donor. So he has given that away in his lifetime. And I think one of the joys of Dickie, and actually, so owning, owning a sports club might be madness, but actually, if you have money... You can't take it with you. No. And one of the joys of it is that you're effectively creating your legacy that you can enjoy in your lifetime. He loves it. I love it. Sure. You, you, you are giving so much. And, it, and it, it, it is no longer just the rugby. I think because of concussion, Parkinson's, motor neurone disease, dementia, all of these things are, yes. that we really know so little about yes. that are associated with the brain. He feels very passionately that he can do this, and he can do it for Cornwall. And so often it's out there, Cornwall's, you know, like the, 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 the baby child over there at the end of the earth, and, and he is putting a standard-bearing project for the nation in that county, and, and the rest will follow. I have a contact who's the chairman of Sheffield FC. Sheffield FC is the oldest football club in the world. Is it? Yes, and uh, Richard Sims. Wow. Tim's is uh, a personal friend of mine, mm-hmm. and the first thing I'm going to do when I get back to Sheffield tomorrow is call him. Well, I would be delighted. To, and, and everybody I meet, and lots of our listeners will be listening to this amazing podcast yeah. today, and I'm so grateful that you came in to speak to us. We, the world is so richer because of the things that you've talked about. Thank you. It must be, it must be awfully... Uh, I don't know what the word to use, but your husband <laughs> looking at you and thinking you're a spring spider. <laughs> I completely understand what he's saying, but I would be in awe because I know how dynamic my wife is and I look at her and think, how does she do those things? If your husband... But I'd I love to meet him and talk to him. Oh, bless you. <laughs> but I think it's also the gift of being able to work in things that you're passionate about. Yes. I mean, I, the balance for me is that I've spent a life working doing things that I care about very deeply. Sure. And I kind of get, I say I get paid in heart stamps. <laughs> um, you know, I get the joy of doing something that 80% of the time I absolutely adore. And I don't get paid very much. Sure. I mean, I mean, Dickie's very generous, but, you know, my, I, I could have, you know, gone into the city and, sure. and done what many people who are listening to this sure. do. And they can use their money to do five times what I do. Sure. You know, so often people say to me, well, maybe I should give up my, you know, high-flying career and go and volunteer to do X in Africa or India. And I'm saying, well, then you're just one person. Your money can pay for five of you or 10 or 15. So do not be embarrassed about it. Mm. But that's that's the balance for me is that it doesn't feel like work because I do things I care about. And, And that way, I suppose you do find energy, don't you? Jim Rowan said, Make your vocation your vacation. There you go. That's fantastic.